welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is Relaxation Hypnosis for Stress, Anxiety and Panic Attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now there may be the odd background sound. It's very windy outside today. Um, but that's okay because this is going to be a short recording with an exercise that you can do if you wanna. Okay. Um, yeah, so I also want to say thank you for listening to this podcast and thank you for your support. Uh, if you didn't listen, there'd be no point in me making it. And this is pretty much on a daily basis my most popular podcast now out of all the ones that I do and I do a few so thank you thank you for listening and I hope that what I do is useful so this is going to be a question see I I would say um, I'm a bit of a born warrior going you know all the way back to when I was very very young I used to worry about things and I used to get ill like physically ill worrying doesn't happen as much as it used to uh, which is a good thing but I would say part of that is due to work that I've done you know, things that I've done to help myself but it's almost the, that feeling of literally feeling sick with worry is awful it's a horrible, horrible experience and I would, I would guess that everybody has felt that way at some point in their life some more than others and if it if it is like you know a really rare thing then chances are that the thing you're worried about might be huge you know it may be someone's in hospital or maybe you've got the person might have medical tests being done or about to lose their job or you know might actually be they're worrying about something that actually is happening but for the majority of people the worry is possibly about things that is never going to happen or probably won't happen and for people that have uh, anxiety, stress, disorder, or whatever you want to call it, you know, problems with that stuff. There's a chance that you over worry, like I do sometimes. I don't worry as much as I used to, but I'm still pretty good at it. I am. It's almost uh, a skill, you know. Uh, not very good skill there, there are benefits to it actually let's not be too negative because it's so easy to sort of get really neg negged out about how we are and almost dismissing and putting ourselves down because of a condition that is painful yet it's also a really good skill to have as well because if you was a health and safety expert, if you if you called in a health and safety expert and you were building a building, you know, you had this big building, you didn't know about how it needs to be done, you were relying on the builders, you were relying on the carpenters, you were relying on the individual workers to do their bit. But you and the architect and stuff, but you didn't really know about the health and safety aspects and you wanted to make sure that everybody was safe on the site. You wanted to make sure that the building stayed up once it was built. 
Now, you employ someone or you get someone to contract someone in that is in charge of that stuff, that checks everything, makes sure everything's correct. Who would you prefer? Someone that is a born warrior or someone that really just doesn't care or just naturally just is kind of flippant and is really positive well everything will be okay everything will be fine everything will work out okay I don't need to worry about stuff now in that situation a naturally born warrior would be the perfect person because they would notice things that maybe well they probably notice things that aren't there they'll be worrying about things that are never going to happen but in some ways in that scenario it's better to be like that than to not worry about things that may very well happen so it's a skill it's something if you flip it on its side it's not necessarily a bad thing you know if you're a child or even an adult someone walks up to you and says oh do you want to you want to get in my car and I'll take you to this place and you know if you get a sense of like oh no and a worry like oh no and you back down and you say no I'm not going to do that compared to not worrying about anything yeah it's going to be fine and it might not be I know in extreme it could be an extreme situation but I did that once waiting for a taxi Three o'clock in the morning. The only reason I had confidence is because of the substance I had inhaled. So I'm not going to go into details, but you know, I used to do uh, stuff when I was younger. And I felt, I didn't feel, I wasn't worried about anything compared to how I normally would have been. I wasn't careful, wasn't looking out for myself. And waiting three o'clock in the morning after this party, I was about 26, 27, and I was waiting. And some random man came up to me and said, Do us a favor, mate. Uh, do you want to get in my car? I'm a taxi driver, but I, I, have to, I can't be waiting. I have to wait in a queue, and you'd be doing me a favor so I'd get a fare quicker. And, and I said, Yeah, all right then. Do him a favor. That turned out he was absolutely um, psychotic, looking to hurt me. Didn't know at the time. He didn't hurt me, by the way, but that was his intention. And I won't go any more into that situation, but, you know, I got out of it and it was fine. But I put myself in danger without thinking about it. Any other, any other time in my life, I would have been... No oh, thanks mate That would have been it There's no way Throughout the whole of my life That I would have got into a car At 3 o'clock in the morning With someone that was obviously um, I want to It's really I want to use the word unstable But at the same time I'm, I'm aware that I'm making a recording For people That may be or you know having mental health issues this was a different type of unstable this was uh, someone that was out to do harm okay it's a different different scenario and I'd be very surprised if he hadn't done harm previously and probably since as well but unfortunately I didn't have any of his details to sort of so just no point contacting the police at the time I didn't think um, plus I was uh, a little inebriated myself so I didn't really, you know anyway, that's a long time ago if it happened now I would probably think differently to be fair, if it happened now I wouldn't get into the car but I might take down the registration number of the car and uh, call the police if it happened now or if I saw someone getting into the car I'd cause a fuss so you know different situation now to what it was back then you know it was just a, a weird time bad bad decision on my side because I didn't have that 
worry with no worries. So having no worries at all is as harmful potentially as being full of worries. And of course none of us want to be full of worries either. So if you ever think to yourself, I wish I didn't worry about anything, maybe retract that. Maybe think about a scenario where in the past it could be as simple as looking before you cross the road. Why do you look either way, you know, it depends where you live and you might have a one way street, but you look before you cross the road to see if there's any cars coming or motorbikes or lorries or whatever. You do that because we're all worried that we're going to get hit by a car in that moment it's a preservation thing and it's a natural thing and it's a healthy thing it's a brilliantly wonderful thing to do so if you got rid of all worry or anything then you just walk straight across the road and eventually you'd get hit by something I know people who just walk across the road they don't even look sometimes and it amazes me that they don't get hit but eventually they will so having concerns maybe we can change the word from worrying to being concerned about yourself and the fact that you're concerned uh, means that you care about yourself and the fact that you care about yourself means that you're open you're open to making decisions and choices that will help you you know you'll do whatever it takes to improve your life to reduce anxiety and stress and you will succeed because you care about yourself and sometimes you need to remember that you actually do care about yourself because it's so easy just to say I don't care about myself I don't don't care anymore and then I've had people say that to me and then they, they go and cross the road and they look before they cross and they cross the road which shows that they do care about themselves. They're just not in tune with it. Otherwise, they wouldn't even look. They do care about themselves. We all have the ability to care about ourselves. And it's worth getting in touch with that. So that's that side. Uh, I think it's really useful to move away from the having a go at ourselves. I worry too much. I'm a worrier. Why? Haven't we all had enough uh, of other people putting us down through the years? Uh, Haven't we had enough of putting ourselves down through the years? All of us. Even successful people that look like they're happy all the time I probably also had a a fair share of their own negativity you know towards themselves and how other people being negative to them as human beings we all experience this so that's flipping on its side to realise that actually worrying change it to concern and then change that to caring about yourself So you care about yourself. And you might say, well, how can you ever care about yourself too much compared to, you know, I worry too much. How can you care about yourself too much? Well, you can can care about yourself, but at the same time, have some faith in yourself. Have some trust in yourself. And to remember that you're going to be okay. No matter what happens, you're going to be okay. So this technique is, you know, there's lots of ways to reduce the worry. 
So if you listen to one of my recordings where I'm doing a relaxation session, whether it's for sleep or for relaxation or for both, in that time, during that process, whether it's half an hour, whether it's two hours, you can let go of everything. And the more often you do it, the easier it becomes. And the more time you spend relaxing, the more relaxed you'll feel during the day when you're just doing whatever it is you do. Okay? So this um, exercise is going to be this. Simple. Asking yourself a question. Okay? Uh, so when you're worrying, if you if you f- you need to notice when you're worrying about stuff, instead of allowing it to be automatic, start to take control. This is your mind. You own your mind, and what you think about affects how you feel. That's a fact. So start to notice what you're thinking about, and if there's something you're worrying about, let's say it could be. Will the bus get there on time? For as an example, I've got a very limiting life, and I always talk about buses. So all I all I do is travel on buses. It's not, but I'm trying to think of some something kind of universal, you know. Uh, so you think about something. The question is: Is this important? Is it important? And uh, just to let you know, there is some background sounds, people downstairs being noisy, but I don't want to stop the recording now I started. I'll just continue. So, the is it important? Generally, is the thing you're worrying about important? And if it is important, or even if it's not important, next question, is there anything I can do? So, an example, I'm worried about whether or not uh, the journey I'm going to take, whether or not my car will run out of petrol. Well, is there? Is it worth worrying about? You could say, well, yeah, because it's important. It's, it's worth thinking about, worrying, because once you've solved the problem, it's no longer anything worth worrying about. So... Okay, so it's worth it's worth worrying about. Fair enough. Okay, is it something you can do? Well, yeah, you can put petrol into your tank or diesel or whatever you take. Fill your tank up with petrol. Maybe have a spare petrol thing in the boot. I don't know if you're still allowed to do that these days, but you know, prepare, and then that worry is gone gone forever you know from a similar thing oh what if I get a flat tyre then you have a spare wheel do you have a spare wheel yeah you ain't got to worry about it then have you is the spare wheel in your car no it's in the garage well put it into the car then unless you're going to travel with the garage behind you so you know it's some things are easily solvable therefore not useful to worry about but may be important see things like that are important in a sense of if you're going on a long journey you're going to want to make sure you've got enough petrol yeah, just standard things you know and then you don't worry anymore have a checklist just practical things what about those things which you're probably thinking what about the things that I worry about that I don't need to worry about why do I worry about things that are you may worry about things that have got nothing to do with you uh, in a sense of you're worrying about someone else's life uh, and that might be because either you, you're just used to doing it Or it might be a family member, you know, it might be your child or your parent, 
and you're worried about their health or you're worried about what they're going to do next because they're in a bit of a difficult situation. So you can ask yourself, is this important? And you say, oh yeah, it's important to you. More important to them, but it's important to you. But you can ask yourself another question for those things, you know, basically, what are you gaining? What am I gaining from worrying about this? What's it giving me? What are you getting? And something changes. What am I gaining from worrying about this? So I'm going to think of an example of my own life, okay? Something... Okay, the thing I'm worrying about, I guess, at the moment is will the supermarkets stop doing deliveries again? I had about three three or four months where I couldn't get deliveries because of the coronavirus so that's on my mind it's generally one of the things that I'm kind of being worried about are they because it's starting to at the time of this recording 26th of September 2020 the parts of the country are starting to be locked down and you know so that's a worry so how is worrying about that helping me I do have an answer for that. Worrying about it helping me, it's the thing that's helped me is it's getting me to take action to prepare for that outcome by making sure that I've got enough stuff to get me through if it was if there was the lockdown and if the the supermarket decided to stop delivering to me because I wasn't on their list of uh, which is what they said before so they wouldn't deliver to me so I can prepare by making sure that I've got enough things in I can prepare emotionally because there was no way of preparing before it's never happened in my life there's no way of preparing for the lockdown, the emotional results of it, because it never happened. I didn't know what to expect. I'd never been told to not leave my house before. I'd never been unable to get food before. Um, so it's kind of, you know, it's a weird, a weird experience. So now I'll be prepared for that. It's not going to be such a shock if it happens again but I can prepare and get food so the next question is it worth worrying about now then do I need to worry about it anymore and the answer is no because I've addressed it and I know what I'm going to do and it might be worth writing it down. Now, you can use this, I suppose, for any situation, anything that you're, you've been worrying about. But you, you know, you may find yourself worrying about stuff that doesn't even correlate with your own life you know worrying about the weather worrying about things that you have no control no control over at all we can't control the weather we can't control what other people do you know if you're driving on the road you can't control how other people drive 
So all you can do is protect yourself and do your best and try and prepare so that you're able to stop the car if need be, to be vigilant. So I wonder what other things you're worried about, what things you could, you know, address. And I've been quite vague with the wording because you can do it however you want. You know, basically, if you're worried about uh, something that's likely never going to happen, because most things we worry about don't happen, statistically. Yet, it's the same level of pain regardless. You know, I'd... A similar thing to worrying is being scared. Living in fear. Like, I don't... For a part of my life, I have lived in fear and I refuse to do that anymore. You know, I used to go through a period when I thought that, you know, I was something bad was going to happen and... Uh, and then I realised that, well... Why suffer... For 20 years or 30 years for something that might happen and it may happen in 30 years time but then I can just deal with it then why spend all that time beforehand suffering for something that you only need to suffer once with And that's when I started to think differently about worrying about certain situations that could happen. And you know what? Another thing, this is a positive to remember because I like the idea of looking at something that would generally be classed as negative and finding a positive with it. The more you're able to worry, okay, what that proves to me is you are an incredibly creative person. Incredibly creative. And that is an amazing skill to have. You're basically a storyteller. If you could think up a scenario of something that might happen and then just let it keep going and going and going and going, which is something that I, I do sometimes, when you stop, you can actually realize that, wow, you've basically just written the script for a TV show in your head or for a scene out of a movie that you've just created and maybe then you can just you know almost pat yourself on the back and say you know what wow I really am creative that was quite amazing really and then you can laugh at it you can sort of look back at the situation that you imagined that escalated into something that had zero to do with what you were initially worried about. I mean, I I tell you what, I've got a thing that I used to do. I still do it sometimes. Is I actually worry about something that's already happened, and then add a scenario onto it. So I'll give you an example. I there's been millions of different examples, but I'll give you one. I was in a theatre when I was in my late twenties. Hadn't been in a theatre before, it was all new to me really. Um, it was really proper top class in the West End and I was dating this lady and she liked nice things so I kind of went out of her and I had a bottle of beer which I smuggled into the theatre. Was supposed to, You're supposed to just drink them outside and not take them in with you. I smuggled it in, I put it on the side and it slipped and I caught it 
I caught it just before, and it was a, it would have landed on someone's head, way way down. Um, I can't imagine the distance would be enough to cause. Well, it probably would. It would have caused some damage. I imagine, especially the person just watching, and suddenly his thing lands on their head. It really gave me a shock, but I didn't have time to really dwell on it because I was busy watching the. I think it was uh, waiting for for God or something. It was uh, some play. Anyway, afterwards, I kept thinking about it, and I started worrying about something that had already happened but adding all these different scenarios where the bottle hit a lady below or a man below and uh, all these things happened afterwards uh, a riot or the police or you know serious injury and all these things and then then I realised and this went on for a while I wasn't it wasn't um it wasn't all I was thinking about, not in any way, but it was something that kept coming back to me. Kept like, oh, blimey. And then I thought, why? But then at the same time, I thought, wow, this is quite creative. I'm basically getting this whole scenario, almost like a movie scene of extreme proportions being triggered by a bottle being accidentally dropped so you know I don't imagine as many people would do something like that on purpose so accidentally dropped I shouldn't have had the bottle in there in the first place and the whole explosion of action that came after that in my mind even though nothing actually happened because I caught the bottle so that's another scenario like worrying about something that has happened but didn't happen Worrying about something that was fine, but what could have gone wrong? Now, I am i might be the only one that's ever had that, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Now, if you're in that situation, that's definitely one to start, you know, logically to think, well, did anything bad happen? No, okay. And perhaps just pat yourself on the back for being so creative. And let it go. So there might be lots of those situations. And I've I've had lots. But then there's those situations where I wish I'd done something different, you know? We've all had those. It's natural. Yeah, I guess it's just regretting you know what we've done and wishing for a different outcome the different outcome cannot happen it's as simple as that you can't change the outcome of something that happened 10 years ago or 20 years ago or sometimes that you can make amends or maybe you can apologize but sometimes I worry about what I've done and I start to think of scenarios where I could have corrected it. So again, creativity comes in. A scenario where things would have worked out okay. But regret, you know, it's one of those things, isn't it? So that's something else. It's worrying, even though it's it's not... <clears throat> classed in a worrying thing it's still the same stuff I think worrying about something that's already happened that didn't go very well perhaps didn't go as planned or maybe something that didn't happen that you would have liked to have happened or you didn't do something that you wish you had done and then worrying about it so there's no point is there is there any use in that does it help you in any way and it might on some level help in a sense of 
Well, next time I get an opportunity, or perhaps I'll take it. I learn from that mistake. But I can't change what's happened. But I can learn from the mistake. And once you've done that, you don't have to think about it anymore. It's done. Once you say to yourself the words, I've learned from my mistake. And if a similar situation arises, I'll do something different. So, there's a lot, it's so easy to get caught up in that stuff. And then there's, you know, so there's worrying from all angles. So if individual worries, you just ask yourself, is this useful? Or how is this helping me? How is it helping me? Or you can even do a a percentage. You could do a percentage saying, what percentage, what's the chances of this actually happening? So if you're worried about something that hasn't happened yet, you're not sure if it's going to happen, you can gauge it. So what what's the chances, genuinely, in reality, the chances of this happening? From, you know, zero to ten, or out of a hundred, what percentage is it likely to happen? And if you just be really, really honest with yourself... And if it turns out to be very low percentage, then you might as well just let it go. It's a waste of your time. And that energy would be much better free for you to use it for other things that are positive. Because that's what you find. When you start to let this stuff go, the energy gets released. The energy is available for positive thinking, for looking forward towards things that are going to happen. So to move from being worried about something that might happen to looking forward to something that you have planned to happen in your life. So, yeah, it can just be a transference of energy just by asking yourself these questions. So I'm going to bring this end to this recording, but it's you can ask yourself whatever questions you want, but the main thing is, is it likely to happen? And if it did happen, what's the worst thing? Uh, I'll give you an example of someone that came to see me that had OCD extremely extremely bad OCD you know it's very extreme and I, I guess if you've got OCD it's extreme that's the whole point of it being you know um, it's never no one's ever um, gone to a therapist that's got OCD for mild issues it's always you know it's difficult and this person said that they literally before they left their house, they would keep going back to the tap in the bath to make sure that the bath tap was turned off. And every time I went to the front door, they'd go back to the, the bathroom to make sure the tap was turned off. And he turned the tap so hard, he would make his hand bleed. That's how hard he was turning it. And I said to him, well, what's the worst that can happen? And he said, well, the bath could flood. I said, so? He said, well, it could flood and cause flood damage. I said, yeah, so? And what's what's the worst that could happen from that? And he couldn't think of anything further than that, other than he's got insurance. The insurance covers that. And the discomfort of the whole thing. Of course, having flood damage is horrible. But it's a one-off thing. 
it's highly unlikely ever to happen to anyone. And if it does happen, it's going to be a one-off. I've known a couple of people who've had it. It's horrible, but it's manageable. And however horrible it is, it's nothing compared to the daily torture he was putting himself through. Daily. Every day of his life, 365 days a year. That mental anguish that he was going through doing that, and I'm guessing probably how much worrying he was doing when he was at work about the tap, or whether or not the tap was turned off, whether or not his house was flooding. When actually, if his house did flood, it would not be the end of the world. You know? And so what if it did happen? In some ways, it, he would have been better off leaving the tap on and letting it flood to break that pattern. But that might not have worked, you know. It's a, it's a difficult one to sort of figure out. But I did manage to get him to feel more relaxed about things. And to get him to feel, you know, to see things differently. And that's an extreme thing. I mean, this was, imagine having to do that. You don't have to do it, but feeling you have to do it. Um, because of the worry. And I, I suppose, technically, it's not worry, is it? It's, it's a much worse level of worrying. But I don't think there's any point in dismissing any kind of worrying because it's all horrible. None of it's, well, a lot of it is not useful. So, um, it's about questioning, it's about noticing, uh, and it's about realising that your energy, if you free yourself from that negative energy, it gives you more positive energy, so you can actually spend more time feeling happier, feeling more relaxed, and enjoying your life. So, take care of yourselves, thank you for listening. And remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.